Okay, here we are. I have connected my JVC Averio to my Mac using a USB cord. And on the, the LCD of the camera, I clicked on cl Playback on PC. So it mounts it as a hard drive on my desktop. So I double click on that. I go to the folder called SD Video. I go to the folder that I want to use and the file that I want to open up. Now because what we want to do here is we want to convert the .tod file to something that, that, that can be used by Final Cut Pro or iMovie or whatever. Um, and it won't be able to use it without, without converting it first. And so we're going to be using a program called MPEG Stream Clip. So what you do is if you're not using a mouse, you can control click or you can right click on it with a mouse and click on open with. And chances are it's going to be blank here, so you want to click on other. And then it shows up all your applications and you scroll down until you find MPEG Stream Clip. Now, I'm assuming that you've already installed this on there. And then click on Always Open With. That way, from now on, .tod files are always going to be opened up with MPEG Stream Clip. So click on Open. And here we are. This is a video of a cabin at Valley Forge. And you can play. You can also... You know, you can, you can, you can also do it in full screen, too, by the way. You just click on the, the green button. But um, uh, the thing I like about MPEG Stream Clip is it allows you to do your 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 um, uh, in and out points here versus having to to convert the entire clip um, and and then then import it into Final Cut Pro. This actually saves on hard drive space because you can you can select only what you want out of this clip to convert and not not have to do the whole thing, which is what I like to do. So like I'll click the I'll press the I button for the in and then I'll make the out something like that so that'll be O so the I is for in and the O is for out um, and then once you're ready once you've selected what you want to export out of this particular clip you go to file you export to QuickTime now you can see there's a whole bunch of other uh, conversions and exports options available but in this case we're going to be clicking we're going to be going to QuickTime um, right now it already has 1920 by 1080, 16 by 9 selected, which is fine. Sound can be uncompressed. Quality can stay at 50% because it, it really is it's phenomenally good. But instead of Apple Motion JPEG, -A, I always click on Apple Intermediate Codec, which is a high-definition lossless codec that compresses it, but it's, it's lossless. So you, you really can't tell a difference between the original file and this. Um, and it's a really good... Uh, midway point between um, things that are compatible and or things that are not compatible and your uh, and your uh, nonlinear editor um, it's that's why they call it the intermediate codec so anyway um, I always deinterlace the video at this point because it saves me from having to do it another step later so I then I click make movie and then I save it as Cabin at Valley Forge, or whatever you want to name it, of course, and then hit save. And immediately shows up an exporter preview window. It shows you what's going on as it exports it. And over here, um, over here you have a progress bar that shows you your data rate that you're, com that you're encoding at, and also your percentage. And once it's complete, it would be a little bit faster at this point, but I'm also capturing uh, 720p on my laptop so it's a little bit slower than normal but it's usually real time or, or maybe a little faster and so once you're done once you're done you're, you're, you're done you're, you can open up Final Cut Pro or iMovie and you can import this file right here and if I double click you can see that from this it's full screen it's full 1080 by or uh, 1920 by 1080 um, and it's, it's there so uh, so now you can you can import that and and use it, and uh, it's really easy to work with. Um, most of the time when I'm creating a new document in Final Cut Pro, I'll just go to drag it into the timeline, and it'll ask me to change the settings of the the um, project to match that of the clip, and I say yes, and so automatically changes it to that format so that I don't have to do any pre-rendering, which is really cool. Um, so there you go. Hope this has helped. Um, and thank you for watching.